All right, good afternoon, everybody. John Ward, Director of Emergency Management here with uh, Unified Command uh, with our partners that are responding to the COVID-19 event here in Clay County. Uh, just a, a quick update, and then Heather will begin speaking from the Health Department perspective. We have uh, 79 positive cases and a total of six deaths so far to date. Um, as far as any of our updated numbers, please go to alert.claycountygov.com, where we have re We've rebuilt that site to have all the COVID-19 data accessible from there rather than go into multiple different sites. Again, that'll be alert.claycountygov.com. Uh, we're on day 25 of uh, Unified Command, working on with our partners from uh, BCC, the Department of Health, Sheriff's Office, School District, municipalities, hospitals, and our utility partners. Uh, we are preparing again for another six to eight weeks more of this, but I do want to say what our community is doing is helping stop the spread. The physical distancing that we're seeing is working, and we just ask that you continue to do this over this next six to eight weeks of maintaining groups of less than 10, and then also keeping that physical distance of six feet or more. Uh, we're continuing our daily communications with our state and federal partners as it responds to this, as this is a nationwide and a worldwide event. So as far as resources, commodities, those type things, they're, uh, they're very slow in coming in, so we're working with our partners on trying to expedite those processes as our larger manufacturing companies are continue to process more and get them in theater. <clears throat> Again, the physical distancing is what we need to continue on. Uh, we're starting to see a lot of folks that are continually taking this seriously, which is good. And then we saw good turnouts at our, our good um, turnouts at our parks where people were keeping those small groups and the physical distancing there. Uh, the governor will continue to monitor uh, the governor's executive order 2091, the safer at home executive order. We've been working with our law enforcement partners as they've been monitoring that with our businesses. It also is uh, if you're 65 and older uh, with any underlying medical conditions, uh, you shall stay at home. And then all of our persons, all of our citizens here in the county need to limit their movement except for essential services. Going to the store, getting those groceries, um, you know, going to work, whatever it may be. It's just really trying to limit that movement to stop the spread. Uh, CCSO has currently been, been working with controlling, or, or I'm sorry, patrolling our parks and then also our boat ramps. FWC has been monitoring the waterways is to make sure the boats are keeping those 50 foot, uh, those 50 foot distances with boats. Uh, one thing I would like to say is uh, CDC has developed a guidance for our EMS providers or for when you call 911. The dispatchers that answer the phone are gonna ask, a mul mul gonna ask you a multitude of questions as far as to help them be able to respond to you and it also allows our first responders to have PPE on to protect you and to protect our responders that are responding to this. So please don't hesitate to answer those questions, whether it's temperature, travel, anything along those lines. It's truly going to help us be able to respond appropriately and protect our first responders also. Uh, we've been working aggressively with our food banks. We still have our six food banks that we're continually supplying food, and I'd like to thank our volunteer partners that are running those food banks for continually providing this service. As we know this demand is gonna increase, we're planning accordingly to increase the commodities that are coming out into our food banks so they can continue providing the needed food for our community. And then uh, the, as far as the call center, our call center as always is open seven days a week, 877-252. 9362 and that is open Monday through Sunday 8 to 5 and then our website again is alert.claycountygov.com Clay County thank you for helping us respond to this event now I'm going to call up Heather Huffman the director of the health department Thank you, John, and thank for your, thanks for your partnership during this. So I just want to give a couple updates today. So we are at 79 cases as of the 1130 update, six deaths. I want to give you a little bit of the other uh, testing numbers. We've done 1,097 tests, and over 1,000 of those were negative, 1,014. So again, the best way to get that information is from floridahealth.gov through the COVID-19 website. There is a dashboard on there. It's updated twice daily, 1130 and 630. It's where you can get that latest information, not only um, on the tests and the positives, the negatives, also by county level, and you can also get them down into zip code level within the counties. 
Um, so again, those are the best places to get. I just wanted to give a little bit of information on rapid testing. I know the national news and some of your media outlets have been talking about the rapid tests that are coming out there and what's available. Um, so we currently are still using through the Bureau of Public Health Labs and the guidance to the Florida Department of Health, we're still continuing to use those PCR tests. Those are consistent and the most accurate, useful tests to drive public health and clinical action. So at this point, the Department of Health is not currently using any rapid test um, and, and testing for antibodies. There's a little bit of hesitance with those and um, some concerns, so we want to move forward and continue to use the most reliable for our clinical decisions. Um, and um, again, social distancing, physical distancing is going to be the most helpful thing to mitigate the strategies that we have out there for mitigating the COVID-19. At this point, I'll introduce Howard Wanamaker, the county manager. Okay, thank you, Heather. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, John. Thank you, Heather, for your latest updates. Uh, we continue to work with federal, uh, state, and local leadership in our response to this COVID-19 pandemic. I also want to uh, take a moment to thank our first responders out there, doctors, nurses, health department staff, for caring for those that are infected. It has been a long month with many weeks ahead. Thank you. We must all do our part to stop the spread of this virus and protect others, especially those most vulnerable. Please stay at home unless it is absolutely necessary to venture out to fulfill essential services or conduct essential activities. We will all get through this together and most importantly, recover faster if we all practice physical distancing. Let's stop the spread of this virus together Thank you. Now we'll open up for questions. I think one of the questions some folks may have had asked and, uh, is that when it comes to churches, um, what is the county doing in reference to churches? Are there a certain amount of folks that are allowed to be in the church or can churches still have the max capacity that they can hold? Yeah, that's a good question. So. We've really kind of left it up to uh, each leadership of each church uh, that's out there, but to follow and highly encourage them to follow the CDC's guidelines for 10 and under uh, for the capacity uh, of their churches and house of worships. Um, I do know that uh, there are many churches out there that are conducting services in parking lots uh, and their parishioners are remaining within their vehicles. Uh, there, I think uh, no, no longer than about 45 minutes to an hour so that no one uh, needs to use the facilities or get out of their car uh, and then they can uh, return home. That is a, a viable option to take uh, for those uh, coming up for, uh, for Sunday coming up. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you all. 